Good morning and welcome to the Futures Outlook for the week starting with October 15th. We're going to review and we're going to forecast the futures, the activity for futures indices and for gold and oil. Right now it is 11 a.m. Eastern. It is October 14th. So let's get started with NASDAQ. NASDAQ broke uh, many levels of support until it reached the 50 SMA from which it has bounced. And uh, as you could see, this volatility is uh, quite symmetric to what we had back in February, beginning of February. So what it is important is that we stabilize. We still have not broken the uptrend on the weekly chart. We still have a series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, moving to the daily charts, the daily charts, and actually uh, this was the big, the 1010 was the big, big uh, volatile day that in, in fact broke many levels of support along the way, breaking the 1008 support level and the low, uh, getting a bounce lower into, uh, in, and actually violating the 7175 from this prior pivot low from July 30th and flurrying down into this double bottom formation here. Uh, the price came with tons of velocity and we ran from 7,000 to uh, 6,900. And from this point, we have rotated. So for the first time, you take a look at the volume here. Uh, this is something that I have been watching all week long to see which is the, you know, the real direction for uh, for these Eminis and which, uh, where is the directional bias? Uh, where's the money flowing into? All right, so finally we had a big surge and we had uh, we had the volume up, uh, rotated off the 200 moving average, simple moving average. But I just want to show you, take a look at this swing here from 6,900 to 7,137. That is a huge, huge swing for, uh, for intraday. So... Needless to say, this swing here on 1010 came from 7413 all the way to 7000, below 7000. So that's a huge, huge move to the downside. We haven't seen that in a long time. This is not typical, uh, typical of the trading activity. One thing that it is to be noted is that this is a doji candle happening right at the 200 SMA. And we have the rotation now, and we have the very strong finish into Friday. What that means is that we may start pushing a little bit higher. But uh, let's not ignore the fact that 7,200 is minor resistance from this prior pivot low. And it is going to influence price at this point. If the price is going to have a digestive move, meaning a range on the one hour chart, on the four hour chart, or any other minor time frame for a longer period of time into the Sunday night session, going into the Monday session, we may see a continuation higher. Now, the daily chart, again, it is still very much into a bullish uptrend. However, smaller time frames are pushing lower and we have these higher time frames that are pushing higher. I think the big line in the sand is going to come First off, at 7,200, this is going to be a big barrier. If we turn around from 7,200, we may go back and revisit the 6,900, and we may go back to revis revisit lows that we have not been trading in a very, very long time, such as the 6,850 zone. So that is, again, another area of support. So we're going to price is going velocity is going to take over price and it's going to push 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 the price lower the more we grind like i said into this area and the more we're going to push higher then the the next line in the sand is going to be 7300 so we may have the velocity to run into the 70 to 7300 so as you could see we pretty much have 100 point voids that we're looking at because of the really big volatile move that we had uh last week uh, once again, we need to take trading one day at a time. This is not a market for tight stops. 
Uh, most of the stops that are developing have, and this looking at the two minute or the five minute chart, have 80 and sometimes even more uh, a point risk. So this is definitely not a market for the amateur trader, for a beginner trader, or even for a for small trading accounts. So this is not the market uh, for small trading accounts. All right, let's move on to the one hour and let's take a look at some constructive activity that we have uh, noted in the trading room last week and last Friday to be exact. Friday was the big rotation day, was the biggest rotation day that we have seen in quite some time. Uh, and we actually traded above this prior pivot high, which was in the 71, uh, 7150 vicinity. So we have rotated higher, pulled back, we wiggled, we came in exactly into a key focal point into the 40, we rotated back up, and right now we're just trying to break above the 7200. You can see that we haven't tapped yet into the 7200. 7200 comes from that uh, prior pivot low from July 30th, and that is going to be the big deal. Uh, if we push through 7200, we're, we are going to have room for a continuation higher into the 7250, 7280, and 7300. This is what we're gonna be looking for short term. And I'm talking about more intraday trading. So this is a medium, medium based uh, time frame, such as 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour. And we may have this continuation into the 7300. Now we're, again, it's going to be a day by day uh, type of trading because we have a lot of damage uh, uh, that has been done on our charts. All right, let's uh, continue with the Imini Dow. And the Imini Dow was uh, a little weaker along with Russell. In fact, Russell closed on Friday in negative territory, being down close to one point. Uh, one of the most advanced indices continued to be NASDAQ, very, very volatile. And NASDAQ actually uh, was up on Friday 2.2%. Uh, 2, 2 so it was, I think it was like 150 points or 154 points to the upside. All right, let's remove this and uh, let's uh, begin with the weekly chart. The weekly chart pinned as well on the 50 SMA. The last time we have revisited the 50 SMA was back in July, from which we had a really nice pullback buy, three bar classic pullback buy. Uh, that moved higher. It was really, really nice. And uh, we had been, we have been in a continue in, in an uptrending pattern since then. We had a very difficult week on uh, the last trading week. In fact, the last two trading weeks um, of uh, um, well, the last trading week of September and the beginning with October. So last two trading weeks of September, nonetheless. Okay. Um, and we tapped into this double top. We pushed higher. We tried to, try to print that 27K. Uh, Doji, come back. And here's the thing. We have violated a lot of support levels. Well, first off, we violated the first minor support level, which was a 750 zone. And then we came in and we actually triggered the weekly sell that should have taken the price into the 10 EMA. Now, if the price would have remained strong at this point, we would have seen a reversal off of this 10 EMA. Why? Well, because we have been riding the 10 EMA since July, since beginning of July. It was no, it was actually normal for it to pull into the 10 EMA and reverse at that point. But the volatility came in with a lot of pressure and uh, violated the second level, actually, yeah, actually the second level of, uh, the third level, I'm sorry, the third level of support, which was at 25,830. Minor support level breached, came in, dig, and actually pushed the price into the 20 SMA, just brushed it away at the 25,500, and then it was a co strong confluence zone here that was taken out really, really strongly, and the price velocity took took the price all velocity took the price all the way to the 50 SMA as well, 24,950. So again, 24,950. 
Now let's take a look on the daily chart. Daily chart again, um, the price, uh, the price uh, 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 was actually uh, hooked onto the 200 simple moving average, rotating it from this point on but you could see still that the price is still having a lot of lot of trouble at this location so um this is thursday's range you could see it right here at 25.680 for the high and for the low 24.880 and uh on friday we have not managed to uh build on top of this prior bar of 680 uh and we have not violated it so we're very neutral and conservative when it comes to the m and &E down uh what i truly like is uh the one hour pattern and i think that the one hour pattern is still suggesting that we should apply tons of caution when it comes to the dow that's why 7200 is going to be seen as an area of heavy resistance and possible turnaround area if we're not going to have participation from the Dow, from S&P, and from Russell. So the pattern is still descending. So we have lower lows, lower highs. And so far, the price has not made a new high over 25400 So we have not tapped into the prior high, and this was from the overnight trading. So you can see here that this is the range from Thursday, and we're still trading and struggling within that range. So once the price is going to trade over 400 to 400 to 550, that's when we're going to be building up and looking at this pattern to be a little bit more bullish and constructive. Once again, the risk for uh, for the Dow. We talked about the risk in Nasdaq, which is really really high for the day trader. The risk in the mini &E Dow, smaller time frames. Uh, smaller time frame still very 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 high very high so again if you have a smaller account if you have um, if you're a beginner trader by all means you could try all the strategies into your simulated account but when it comes to live trading uh, the price action is a little bit too hawkish wait until this volatility subsides and provides better entries for your risk level not all accounts are equal so it all comes to personal risk tolerance and it also comes to risk management and capital preservation anything over 25 550 is going to be bullish and we're going to be looking at this rotation this can possibly be the way it is shaping up right now an inverse head and shoulders of what we see on the hourly chart we see the bottom here as being the head here is the right shoulder, the left shoulder, and this could be the neckline into the five, 550, let's say, 550. It's a cluster area between 530 and actually 600. Exactly, my point exactly. So we've been talking about these really wide, wide ranges. So any break above this neckline is gonna be seen bullish. If you want, you can wait for the price to advance into this area to prove that it's really ready to, uh, reverse and look for the first breakout uh, if you have a better setup that is lining up on a minor, minor time frame or just wait for it to break out and then wait for the confirmation wait for the price to come back down and reverse so that would be a trade with confirmation so i, I would actually go for the trade with confirmation because i don't know if the first spike is really gonna take uh it's really gonna take the dow into target uh, obviously, the next resistance areas are going to represent our uh, are going to represent our target levels. A big um, resistance zone is coming at the twenty five six hundred right here, and the twenty five six hundred is coming from a prior pivot low from nine eleven. So we have multiple levels of resistance at this point, which makes it uh, kind of like a very heavy resistance area. So if the price is not going to be able to reach this area or it's just going to meander, it's just going to push towards the 25,500 and then it's going to uh, take a turn back to the downside. Well, uh, the targets are still going to be into the 25K. And if we violate this area, now keep in mind that 25K is a triple bottom. The first low we had on July 23rd, 
the second law we had uh, on August 13th, and this is the third one, okay? So this week, uh, meaning last week, we have the third tap onto this 25K. If this area is gonna be violated, a much larger tradable void may take the price lower to 24 to 40. Okay, 24 to 40. That is the next support level. All right, let's move on to the MNE SMP. And the MNE SMP up 0.97% on Friday, 26 points to the upside. And uh, let's move to the weekly charts tap onto the 50 SMA and slight reversal that happened intraday on Friday. Let's move on to the daily chart. So um, just as a side note, none of the indices have violated the overall massive uptrend on any major time frame. It's just the minor time frames that are, you know, getting that uh, push, that are getting that selling pressure. But remember that Trend reversal comes from minor time frames to higher time frames. All right, let's uh, take a look at to see what's ha what happened on Friday. So on Friday, inside day, uh, we're still trading within the parameters of Thursday's high and Thursday's low. Uh, we're still just gravitating around the 200 simple moving average. A lot of resistance is coming from the 2800. 2800 is gonna be seen as that line in the sand. If the price is gonna accelerate into the 2800, it's gonna break it and he pulled back into, obviously breaking, breaking it a little bit above and he pulled back into the 2800, is going to take price higher and 2850, 2075, 2080, 2900, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but if the price is going to meander around this area and it's not going to try to attempt to tap onto this resistance, uh, turnaround may be possible. And this 2800 may be seen as a breakout point or as a price rejection point from which the price can actually flurry back down. 2750, 2700, et cetera. Back into these lows, 2680. So we still have a lot of room for the downside and pretty impressive target zones. So 2800 is gonna be seen as the line in the sand. Let's take, let's take a quick look at some actionable trading ideas, something that we may look at on Sunday night when the market opens. Same type of wobbly pattern, not really defined yet, but I could see an inverse head and shoulders happening on the one hour chart. Over 2,800, we can actually look for a break higher. As long as 2,800 is not gonna be breached, this is gonna be a bear flag. And below 2,740, definitely more downside to the 2,700. 2,700, uh, 2675, yeah, 2675 is gonna be, be a big, big area. So they do have a lot of room for a continuation lower. Let's take a look at a Russell. All right, and we're gonna begin with, not the monthly, but we're gonna begin with the weekly charts, okay? Weekly chart, trading below the 50 SMA, trading below minor support level at 1600, so this, I mean, the price just sliced through the 50 SMA like butter. So it came back lower, retested. This prior cluster, do you remember this cluster back in February, March, April? And back then, Russell was one great indicator that basically the indices followed. So what I want to, what I mean by that is that any push and any reversal in Russell was seen constructive and pretty much the indices followed the Russell back in February and March and April. Um, so right now we're back into that cluster area, we're still not defined support, it's just a huge area into the 1500, 1550, so it moves in pretty much uh, when we're looking at weekly charts in 50 point increments. Still a lot of weakness. If the price is not gonna manage to trade above 1600, 1600 may be seen as an area where the price may be rejected. All right, let's move on to the daily charts. 
Daily charts are very, very tough right now for us. I'm gonna squish it up a little bit so you can see more price action. Uh, first off, let's start with uh, with what we have going on on a daily level. So on, on, uh, on Friday, we actually broke Thursday's low. All right, so we broke Thursday's low. None of the m &E indices like the Dow, the S&P and NASDAQ, none of those three indices broke below that low. Russell did. So Russell did tapped into the support level at 1530, double bottom from this point, and that is this is from back in May, on May, May 2nd, May 2nd, May 1st, May 3rd. It was a cluster area. Again, it was a, a very difficult uh, zone here, but it rotated. Now you can see the moving averages are fanning out. We're trading below the 200 SMA, which makes it more bearish than the rest of the indices. Still, monthly chart, very strong uptrend. Weekly chart, still into to an uptrend, but dabbing onto that support level that we have, that we had, that, and that we talked about, that cluster that happened from the volatile move in February all the way till March. So it was a very difficult trading environment, but nonetheless, we had, we had Russell intraday that was making really nice moves. All right, so let's move on to the hourly chart for more constructive, for a more <laughs> constructive approach. We have a series of lower lows and lower highs, so definitely we're not even close to trying to reverse. The reversal zone is going to come into the 1580. Once we see the 1580 taken out, that's going to be the line in the sand. And in fact, the first um and i'm going to go back to the daily chart uh the first clue that we're going to be trying to reverse is that we need to trade above the 1575 1575 1576 i'm gonna actually set an alert for this level all right because this is going to be the break out levels this is going to eliminate that daily uh, th that this is going to determine the daily reversal and also, this is going to determine, let me just go to back to the one hour. All right, let's pull this out. All right, this is going to determine the change in the current trend, right? So it would mean you're racing all these prior highs and the price is, yeah, ready to continue higher. Where to? Into the 1620 zone, all right? So things are gonna be a little bit choppy. The one thing that I love about this week that is that we're gonna have fundamentals. Fundamentals are gonna be very important for the market dynamics. Um, most And most likely, uh, they're gonna be more receptive towards fundamentals and not be so sensitive on news. That just That's just a thought. All right, so let's take a look at oil and let's uh, move on to the weekly charts. All right, here we go. On the weekly level, we we pretty much tapped onto a support level at $70.50. And this is the location from these prior highs. So this is a highly, highly, highly sustainable support level right here. Strong support level that we have. Um, and we had, so this week we had a really nice, rotation the price pushed higher into the uh, almost into the 77 zone and we came back down okay we came back down revisited the 10 ema and also this prior pivot high which sets minor support at this level at the 7025 let's see what we have going on on the daily charts daily charts here it is prior pivot high from july end of july creating support at this uh, at this price location now on Friday, we had an inside day, okay? We had an inside day. What this means is that, you know, it's relatively neutral, but if we hold this support level at $70.45, $70 and if we break above $72, we may have a continuation higher back into the 7280s to tap onto this uh, prior pivot high, and then we have a nice clear void to $74 and even higher. 
if the price is going to weaken. So, so far we have a very neutral activity that was a very sideways price action, neutral activity on Friday. If we break below this prior pivot low, the $70.50, we may come in back to retest this confluence zone at the 69.80. All right. So again, for oil, we just have to take it one day at a time as well. But let's not ignore the fact that we're still sitting on support. And as long as we're still sitting on support here, guess what? We're still strong and we're still looking for the upside. One of the things that I wanted to mention is that here's my confirmation. And this comes from a four hour chart. We have the revisit at the 200 moving average. We try to hold, we have tried to hold. You can see that we tapped into the 7050. This is the minor support that is deriving back from July 30th. And we have regained um, the, uh, the buying pressure above the 200 moving average, came back in into the New York trading session on Friday, and then attempted into the close to trade above the prior high. But pretty much we have an inside bar right here. The line in the sand is going to be over $72. 72, if $72 is going to be taken out, and if we're gonna see that 180 reversal on the four hour chart, uh, then price is definitely gonna go higher. Uh, where to? First target is gonna be into $73, and the next target is gonna be $74. So it's gonna move in pretty much $1 increments. But obviously the risk into the $70 and 50 cents uh, needs to hold for that activity. If this is gonna be breached, uh, then we're going to go to plan B that I mentioned before. All right, let's move on to gold. All right, so gold, let's start with the weekly charts. By the way, guys, GDX doing really, really nice. Our swing trade. Uh, so um, for the first time in three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, we have attempted to take out these highs into the 1220. 1220 right now becomes our minor support level. So if we come back into the 1220 zone, any reversal off of that area may push the price higher. We're still under a little bit of pressure because we have an overhead resistance from a very, very flat 200 SMA at the 1230 uh, five level, but keep in mind that that can represent our next target level on a possible reversal off of the 1220 zone. So let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart, you can see that we have finally raised that cluster uh, with a really nice rocket bar, and the pullback is coming and holding so far into the 1220 zone. You can see it right here. Any reversal off of this, off of these highs into the uh, 1228 is going to project the price higher back into the 1238 zone, uh, back into the 1240, 1245, and clear void into the 60 and possibly into the 80. Okay, we also have a heavy confluence zone here into the 80. I just want to go very quickly onto the weekly charts. So yeah, this is it, guys. Uh, also, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, let's move on to the one hour chart. Okay, one hour chart had a steady move. This was a beautiful, beautiful reversal that happened 3 a.m. Eastern. Unfortunately, most of these really nice setups are developing around that time. And if you want to trade um, these overnight moves, you got to go to a higher time frame and trade it at, treat it as a swing. All right, so these are not great for, you know, obviously for the New York session day, day trader, because as you can see here, we, you literally didn't have an entry. Okay, so you had to be in from this reversal uh, at 3 a.m. So right now we have support at the 1220 zone and we have resistance into the 1225 and all the way into the 1230. Obviously any reversal, and I'm gonna look just very quickly on the one hour, uh, on the four hour chart, I'm sorry. So this is the pour right here into the 1219 and any break of the 1225 may project the price higher. So these are the levels and we talked about the targets. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you all have a fantastic trading week. Earnings season has just begun, and we're gonna have more and more earnings. Remember that we're, gonna, we're heading uh, very, very fast into a very, very active earnings season, and this is going to create uh, more um, um, volatility for price. So let's take it one day at a time, uh, and uh, I'll see you in the trading room on Monday at 9 o'clock. Thanks so much, and I hope you all have a great Sunday.